Elon Musk is on a mission to revolutionize the electric vehicle market by bringing a game-changing affordable vehicle to the masses. With part three of his master plan now underway, many may have overlooked the significance of Tesla's Investor Day presentation. But make no mistake, this is a crucial step in Musk's plan to scale sustainable electric products to extreme levels. To truly dominate the market, costs must come down dramatically and Tesla's cheapest car, the Model 3, while a top seller worldwide, still falls short on price. The size of the addressable automotive market increases exponentially as the price starts to drop below where the Model 3 is today. That's why Elon Musk has introduced Tesla's next generation platform, which will enable a cutting edge electric vehicle to crack into the true automotive space. By taking a series of interdependent actions to cut costs by 50% from Model 3 levels, Tesla has the potential to unlock the largest portion of customers yet with this cheaper vehicle. This could have a shocking impact as Tesla is barely scratching the surface of the current car market but has set its sights on a new era of sustainable and affordable transportation. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of financial data going back 15 years, and it's all freely available. Elon Musk's now trilogy of Tesla master plans has always been an open secret. He lays out a path for the next 10 or so years and tries to get everyone on board, whether or not they're employees, investors, or the general public. Even competitors can easily see what Tesla is up to if they choose to acknowledge it. In the most recent case of Tesla's Investor Day, where part three of Elon Musk's master plan was divulged, many seem to misinterpret or be bored of the company's aspirations and roadmap to a fully sustainable future for the entire planet. This may be on par with being numb from boredom during a detailed explanation of curing a deadly disease, for instance. Tesla faces the gargantuan task of converting fossil fuel burning industries worldwide to renewable electric sources, which also offers an unfathomable opportunity. A core part of this plan is tackling transportation, which is where Tesla has focused the majority of its efforts since the founding of the company. According to Tesla, replacing the entire vehicle fleet with electric vehicles will remove about 21% of the world's fossil fuel usage. Tesla has already set up the lineup of vehicles needed to accomplish a large portion of this task, but the biggest missing piece is a widely affordable car, which will ultimately make up the bulk of the company's vehicle sales. Back in January, Elon Musk foreshadowed that Tesla had already started working on a platform that would accomplish this, and that vehicles built on this new platform would be produced at a volume higher than all other Tesla vehicles combined. But in order to deliver such a low-priced car, Tesla needs to make another step change in vehicle cost, which requires a complete rethink of how manufacturing is done. And Elon Musk certainly isn't doing this alone. Having the master plan be an open secret is beneficial for garnering unanimous support from all the parties involved. It appears that Elon Musk has given a directive to challenge all the individuals and teams at Tesla to reimagine how a car is built in order to cut the cost down by 50%. Now this seems similar to a very popular success story from another technology startup, which completely revolutionized the company from the top down. In the early 2000s, Amazon was struggling with its IT infrastructure as different teams within the company were using different software and systems to communicate with each other. This led to inefficiencies and delays in the company's operations. To address this problem, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, issued a mandate in 2002 that required all teams within the company to communicate with each other using only APIs or application programming interfaces. This meant that each team had to build protocols, rules, and tools that could talk to other teams' API endpoints and access their functionality. The use of APIs within Amazon not only improved communication between teams, but also enabled the company to offer its IT infrastructure as a service to other companies, which eventually led to the creation of Amazon Web Services, or AWS, in 2006. 
AWS is now one of the most popular cloud computing platforms in the world, and its success can be traced back to Bezos' mandate to use APIs within Amazon. At Tesla, Elon Musk has issued a similar mandate, to guide and direct the company in accordance with the next phase of his plan. Tesla is responding by starting with the foundation that design, engineering, manufacturing, and automation all come together under one roof for the first time with all of the teams responsible for these processes sitting and communicating together in order to bring up the next vehicle platform. Again, this has never happened before at this stage of development at Tesla. Typically, these teams are separated by different managers or other types of silos, but in this case, they all report to one person. And so this, along with Tesla's deep level of experience and infrastructure, has allowed the company to redefine how vehicles are made. One of Tesla's first steps is a plan to design and produce 100% of the hardware controllers within its next generation vehicle. These are items such as the HVAC controller, infotainment, charging, tire pressure monitors, and many more. This will give the company more oversight and control over its supply chain at the component level. They'll still have suppliers providing materials or parts in order to build and assemble these controllers, but this move will not only improve the quality of the controllers themselves, but also reduce the lead time for component delivery. The Model Y had 61% of its controllers built in-house. Cybertruck aims to advance this to 85%, and the next generation vehicle will be at 100%. Doing this also enables other benefits, such as being able to have granular control of the software of every component, so they can communicate seamlessly with each other. This relates back to the Amazon analogy from earlier, but on a hardware level, where every vehicle component can get any information that it needs from any other component. Tesla uses Sentry Mode as an example here, which may require fine-grained information from various vehicle sensors, cameras, etc. that all need to be processed together in order to sound an alarm or send out alerts, for instance. Tesla may be outsourcing a component of their vehicle for which they may not have access to certain pieces of data that may be useful to enhance Sentry Mode's accuracy even further. And so by bringing everything in-house, they can quickly add that feature or make that useful data accessible without needing to go through some cross-company process that could take months or years or may never get done. Another benefit of moving controllers in-house includes a major undertaking by Tesla to switch its low voltage system from a 12 to 48 volt architecture. Every component needs to be compatible with this new voltage, and so it all needs to be transitioned over at the same time. Traditional car manufacturers can't do this because they rely on many different suppliers, and coordinating every single one of them to create a new product all at the same time is virtually impossible. Tesla is doing it all at once by leveraging their own vertical integration. In turn, a 48-volt architecture will reduce power losses by 16 times, making the vehicle more efficient and increase its range. It will also allow for thinner wires and cut down on material, especially copper wires which aren't cheap. Tesla is also implementing local Ethernet connected controllers to reduce the complexity of the wiring harness. By doing this, Tesla can cut down on the number of wires and connectors in the vehicle, which will simplify the wire harness installation process. This change makes it easier to repair and maintain the vehicle in the long term, especially if they reduce or eliminate the number of cross-car wires. So this is really revolutionizing how the internals of the vehicle are made. Now in terms of the vehicle chassis, Tesla had filed a patent a few years ago for casting the entire body and frame of a vehicle in one shot using what looks like four orthogonal gigapresses. And separately, Elon Musk has said in the past, with the gigapress, Tesla will be making cars in the same way that toy cars are made. The pattern also continued with larger and larger gigapresses being ordered by Tesla, going from a 6,000 ton press for the Model Y castings to a 9,000 ton press for the Cybertruck underbody. It seems logical that for a small compact car, like Tesla's next generation affordable vehicle, with a large enough gigapress, the entire vehicle body can be cast all together, which would speed up the process and reduce the material and welds needed to put everything together. However, after analyzing the Tesla Investor Day presentation, this no longer seems to be the case. For one thing, actual toy cars 
don't have much complexity, and the ones that are cast in one shot usually don't have motors in them or hundreds of meters of wiring and controllers, but instead act as decorative pieces. Tesla made no mention of a massive full car gigapress and instead introduced a parallel assembly process where they divide the vehicle up into five core sections that can be built simultaneously and then joined together in a final step. This includes the front and rear giga castings, but in two separate stations of the assembly process. It seems like making the full vehicle casting would actually be a detriment and slow things down, as Tesla workers would be obstructed by the large metal frame while inserting components into the vehicle, which is exactly what they're trying to avoid. One of the purposes of having five stations work in parallel is so that the number of operators or the operator density can be increased for each station which speeds up how quickly a section of the vehicle can be completed and prepared for final assembly. Tesla also showed rows and rows of stamped vehicle side panels, which further implies that they will not be gigapressed in any way. The gigapress being used for the compact affordable Tesla seems like it would still be limited to the front and rear castings, although Tesla could make sure to include as many components as possible as part of these single castings. The battery pack also sits between the front and rear casting and is intended to come in through the floor of the vehicle, which would make little sense it wouldn't be possible if the entire rigid frame of the car, including the battery pack, was already pre-molded in a gigapress. So it seems like a full car gigapress may be off the table. By transitioning to a parallel assembly process, Tesla will be able to cut its manufacturing footprint down by 40% and reduce wasted time by 30%. During investor day, Tesla stated that previously the vehicle was partially assembled in order to be painted and then disassembled to later be reassembled at the end. This is because they need to paint the entire car in one shot in order to maintain paint consistency. But not only that, but parts such as the Giga casting, which is an internal component, would receive paint, which is a waste of material. And so by painting the car once at one of their five core parallel stations and only painting the parts that need it, Tesla is once again further saving time and cost. Now, Tesla's chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen, said on the Ride the Lightning podcast that he considered Cybertruck style for other vehicles. We also know from Tesla's Investor Day that there will be a robo-taxi variant of the low-cost Tesla. And so if Tesla is planning to sell millions, ultimately tens of millions of units per year, this low-cost model could have a few different key variants and if there's a stainless steel model that doesn't need paint at all, it seems that Tesla's modular manufacturing process easily supports switching to different body types. Elon Musk also once envisioned Model Y not having a steering wheel, and so perhaps this will play out on the RoboTaxi variant of Tesla's next-gen car. And so the parallel manufacturing process appears to add more flexibility. Now if Tesla can indeed create a step change between Model 3 and the next-gen vehicle, and reduce prices by 50%, which seems very possible given the major changes in wiring, controllers, voltages, and parallel assembly, then they appear to be on track to start delivering the $25,000 car that Elon Musk originally announced at Tesla's 2020 Battery Day event. The vehicle aims to start production at Tesla's yet-to-be-built Gigafactory in Mexico and will likely start producing cars in 2024, assuming no major roadblocks. Now, if Tesla builds the batteries for these vehicles in the United States, in Texas for now, they can get battery production tax credits up to $45 per kilowatt hour for the battery cells and packs. And even more interesting for consumers is that while Tesla is planning to develop their next generation platform at their multiple Gigafactory locations, it appears that the Mexico Gigafactory will be in compliance of the IRA rules. As long as the vehicle is assembled in North America, including Canada or Mexico, it could be eligible for the $7,500 tax credit. And so this would drop the price of a $25,000 car to $17,500, which would make it ultra affordable, on par with some of the cheapest ICE vehicles being sold, and unlocking all segments of the automotive market for Tesla to sell into. And so Tesla can further take advantage of the lower cost of labor in Mexico while still getting all of the tax credit benefits. This factor is the icing on the cake for keeping costs low for Tesla's next generation compact car. So do you think Tesla will be ready by 2024 with their new manufacturing process 
to build a car at 50% of today's cost and truly replace fossil fuels by bringing an affordable vehicle to the masses. Don't forget to watch my video on Tesla's next generation motor enhancements. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that helped to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.